Royal Caribbean is known for building bigger-than-life cruise ships, well-known ships named the Allure, Oasis, Symphony, Harmony, Utopia, and the massive Wonder of the Seas have towered over the competition. On April 5, 2022, Royal Caribbean began the construction of the world's largest cruise ship, the Icon of the Seas. This mega ship will be the lead ship in the new Icon class. Not only will the Icon of the Seas be the largest ship in the world, but it will be recognized for the largest water park at sea and it will have the first awe-inspiring aquadome. It's a modern engineering marvel. But what makes the Icon of the Seas amazing? How is this ship this massive designed and engineered? And why will the first in the industry technologies change the way you cruise forever? Stay tuned to find out all this and so much more. Everything is changing and evolving and cruise ships are not the same as they were a few years back. The Icon of the Seas cruise ship is even bigger than some buildings. With a length of 1,198 feet, 365 meters, 2,800 rooms, and a gross tonnage slightly north of 250,000. Oh, and did I mention that it also comes with 22 elevators? When this ship sets sail in January 2024, it'll be the largest cruise ship. And unlike the futuristic floating cities planned in Korea and the Maldives, this one has even started testing. However, when some recent photos were released on the internet recently, everyone was talking about it. Let's just say that those who get a chance to board this cruise ship will feel like they're in their own little town. There will be a water park, which will be the largest water park on water, 40 restaurants, and 8 distinct neighborhoods. And when you want a taste of nature, the ship will come with its own park. And that's not even the craziest bit of it. Icon of the Seas will have enough capacity to hold 5,610 passengers and a crew of 2,350 members. We're talking about a total of close to 10,000 people on board at the same time. But how is this possible? How is it even engineered? The Icon of the Seas is immense. It is five times the size of the Titanic and about 115 feet 35 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower if it were on its side. When the Icon of the Seas begins to sail officially in 2024, it will take the title of the current largest operating ship from the Wonder of the Seas beating it by about 10 feet 3 meters and 2 extra decks. Construction of this humongous cruise ship is taking place at the Meyer Turku shipyard, one of Europe's top shipbuilders in Turku, Finland. Having been in construction for about two and a half years now, the designs had to be tested first. This happened in Royal Caribbean's high-tech innovation lab, known as the Cape. This is just a large, room-sized virtual reality simulator in Miami. In the lab, several people worked on the renderings of the ship and looked at them from all possible angles. And when the design was finally ready, work in Finland's shipyard began. But just like the cruise line's traditions, the construction of this iconic ship began with two long-standing maritime traditions. This is the steel cutting ceremony, which was followed by the keel laying ceremony. All these ceremonies are held on a dry dock, which is sort of a narrow basin that can later be filled with water. It goes without saying that the steel cutting stage is when the first bits of steel for the ship are cut. Then, during the keel laying ceremony, the bottom parts of the actual ship are placed. When the keel laying ceremony took place, they had to use a 3,000 ton crane to lift and place the massive steel block into the dock. From there, the ship's construction started progressing upward. It's actually quite interesting because this was like a giant set of Legos. The reason I'm saying this is because engineers were building parts of the ship, including the 2800 staterooms, block by block at a separate location in the shipyard. When each part was complete, it was craned onto the dock, carefully stacked, and welded into place. As for the outside, the exterior layers of the Icon of the Seas were covered with extra strength steel and curved sheet metal. This makes construction cheaper and the ship lighter when compared to other materials. One significant difference in building the Icon of the Seas from any other ship is the Aqua Dome. This is a futuristic domed entertainment venue on the ship. However, the main challenge with it is that it was being placed towards the bow of the ship. Furthermore, it has a height of 82 feet 25 meters and a width of 164 feet 50 meters. This is the largest of its kind on any cruise. Because of its position, they had to find a way to do it. This is because the higher a heavier piece like this sits on a ship, the more unstable the ship is, affecting the center of gravity as well. Engineers had to conduct many tests during the design process before giving it the green light. To achieve this, they had to use 12 individual steel, glass, and aluminum modules. And in the end, the dome came into shape, using a total of 673 glass panels. When the rounded shape was finally achieved, a special rig with suspension cables of about 1,640 feet 500 meters in length was used to move it onto the front of the ship, but this was not an easy task. 
The final few meters of this move alone took more than six hours to complete, and that doesn't even include the time it took to weld it into place. So you can just imagine how long it took them to place it there. About eight months after construction began, the icon was coming together piece by piece. Eventually, it was ready to be moved out of the dry dock and into an outfitting dock. This is where some of the finer touches of the interior would be made, such as furniture and interior decor. And so, with the help of five tugboats, the ship was pulled to the other part of the shipyard. After a few months of being worked on, the ship was taken out for its first round of sea trials. During this trial, everything from the engines to the steering system was tested and checked to ensure it was good. These trials lasted a few days, with the ship traveling hundreds of kilometers. The second round of trials is expected to be later this year, before the big launch. So we've seen that the icon of the seas is basically a skyscraper at sea or a whole town floating on water. However, it requires a lot of power to keep the engines moving and the lights on. So where does all this power come from? The entire ship will rely on the six multi-fuel engines installed. However, unlike other cruise ships in the past that used diesel to power them, this one will change the industry and use liquefied natural gas. To continue with the trend of being the first in the industry, when the ship gets to port, it'll be plugged into local power grids. This prevents it from using extra fuel to keep the lights on. Ever since recent pictures were released, people have labeled the icon as a monstrosity. Others have talked about how dangerous it looks, given that it does look quite unstable. But contrary to all this, some people are excited to board it. Given that it's already set pre-booking records, it's clear that there's still a market for building these massive structures at sea. As much as ships are being made larger and more advanced, not all ports can accept such a large ship as this one. In fact, some ports have been banning mega ships because of port capacity, pollution, and over-tourism. Therefore, as much as the sky is the limit for skyscrapers, the same cannot be said about ships. The port size could limit how many mega ships are created and launched. However, that won't stop companies like Royal Caribbean from making their ships larger. Passengers will really get a whole new experience on this massive ship, but with it being over three football fields long, it'll take some time to walk from one end to the other. But with amenities like seven pools, which include a swim-up bar, a suspended infinity pool, and what Royal Caribbean has described as the largest pool at sea, walking around this ship is totally worth it. And to pass some time, you can go to the largest water park at sea, called Category 6. We're talking about six slides on board, a free fall slide, a 46-foot, 14-meter drop slide, family raft slides, and a pair of mat racing slides. The icon of the seas has taken cruising to a whole new level, and we can't wait for it to be launched in January 2024. What do you think is the most amazing thing about the icon of the seas? Will you be looking to enjoy a cruise on Royal Caribbean's largest ship? Feel free to let us know in the comments below. And before you go, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more visionary builds all over the world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.